Cape Race on the southeastern corner of Newfoundland. A name known to every mariner in the North Atlantic. They know it, they respect it, they fear it. But not on days like this when the air is clear and the sea is gentle. It's when the thick fog creeps in and the strong tides swirl around the jagged rocks that Cape Race becomes mean and sinister. It's not on days like this. In fact, when the sun shines on a summer's day, this shore can be hauntingly beautiful. There are many places they call the graveyard of the Atlantic, but this is surely one of them. No one knows how many ships have come to grief on these rocks, or how many souls perished in these waters. 237 drowned in the Anglo-Saxon disaster alone. They say the bottom here is strewn with wrecks. Luckily, most of these happened a long time ago. Radar has made quite a difference. Still, the sailors continue to have a healthy respect for Cape Race. They've heard the tales of tragedy and heroism. They know these rocks have murdered many a ship. And so the big ships still pass by, giving the Cape a healthy berth as they bend around the corner of Newfoundland. The closest community to Cape Race is Portugal Cove South. When we got there, the mist was beginning to roll in, as it often does here in early summer. Like many places on the southern Avalon, the land around Portugal Cove South is barren, partridge country, caribou country. But there's nothing barren about the waters around Portugal Cove South. It's supposed to be one of the best and most reliable places for fish on this shore. That's why we went there. And that's why we went out on boat one day last summer with the O'Learys, Patrick and Ian, and their father, Joe. The O'Learys were still hoping for a second run of fish in their traps, while most other boats had turned to the gill nets. Not just the longliners that are gill netting. No, just speedboats. Are they doing better than you fellows now, Joe? Well, money-wise, <laughs> you know, they're getting 42 cents a pound for it, right? You don't get much because the fish are small in here in the trap. Mm, no, sometimes it's small, but then you get a lot of, sometimes you get a lot of larger fish, right? But the trap fish is not worth as much. No, you're not getting paid as much for trap fish. Yeah, just, just the gillnets are right there off our boys. There's the whale, Well, he'll be around again. It's furious, I think. <laughs> well, there's a cable in your trap, and there's a whale right next to your trap, so yeah. maybe you're lucky today. Yes, lucky we, do, we don't catch him. You usually go around the traps when you're under cable and in them. 
very small one, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. But a small, small one can do a lot of damage. Yeah, they're the worst because you get in it, get in your trap, and you just put a hole there, and you know, you don't rip it from the head or nothing. So then you don't know, right? Somebody, had, somebody had a whale the other day here, I believe. Yeah. Leader. Yeah, Herbal Coons had one of the leader. One of the bigger ones, right? Got out by itself, did it? Yeah, it got out by itself. Oh, some damage, not too much, you don't think. Joe, you, do you haul every day? I mean, whether oh, yeah. it's just... Yeah. Weather permitting, we haul every day. But I mean, if, if, if you notice not much fish around, do you bother to haul? Or do you never try with a jigger first or anything? No, no, no. You usually haul every day. Because you don't know when the fish is coming, right? You can come overnight. And you don't need... You don't need a lot to make a few dollars anyway, oh, I no, no. Up a thousand pound a day. You know, five hundred dollars. <laughs> I go with the money. Well, while you don't need a lot of fish these days, you do need a bit more than the O'Leary's got that morning. A disappointing haul. Not much so, is it? No. Uh -huh. Hundred pounds, probably. And that's worth about what now, Joe? Twenty-five dollars. Well, I suppose you never know. It could have, could have been full this morning. That's right. right. It could have been full. As we steamed to the second trap, another skiff loomed out of the fog, Albert Malloy. And from the looks of it, he wasn't doing any better than the O'Leary's. I don't think you're going to make a dollar this morning, Albert. Albert haven't got very much there. No. I don't know. I don't know if he have either one. <laughs> well, by now all hands were pretty sure it was the end of the trapping season. The Capelin skull must be over, or the water warming up. The codfish seemed to be edging offshore. The gillnetters were doing pretty good, but the traps were a blank. Still, it's no point in having them out if you don't check them. And as Joe said, you don't need a lot of fish for a day's pay. Maybe there'd be something in the second trap. What's that, Joe? I don't know. It's like something falling from sand to me. Did you get a lot of them like that here? Yeah, and every time you haul, you get a few, right? That's three now you three, got. Yeah. The sometimes, you get, sometimes you get 15 or 20. And you don't know what they are? No. But this is the only area I've seen them in around here, right? But there's no coral or No, them. this is all sandy bottom. Fine sand, right? Well, it looks like it's made of sand almost. Yeah. That's how it looks like. So it was a mystery. Yeah, the shape of them is the, the mystery of the form with sand, isn't it? Yeah. What in the world are they? Toilet plungers, lens shades? I took some back home to check it out. Ian, I hear you did pretty well as soon as you left school. That uh, first day back, we had 27,000 fishing. First day fishing this year? Uh, it's out of school today. I has 27 highs. That's good. Was a, you brought your father and, and your brother pretty good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great help for school, I suppose, too, with be able to fish in the summertime. Yeah, it's more interesting than school. <laughs> Are you finished with school now or you got another year to go? Oh, I have another two years. Two yeah. years. Yeah. 
So you'll be at this now till September, will you? Yeah. Think you'll stick with the fishery or? I don't think so. <laughs> How about your brother? How about Patrick? You, you, you're a full-time fisherman now, Patrick, yeah? Yes, I had to stick with my. Yeah. I have a new boat and sea boat home, Pat. Okay. We gotta go at the cave from but there's not much sense to the cave from this one. No. You're still hoping for next year, though, eh? For yeah. The yeah. Do you agree with what happened this year with the holding off on the stony way? Yeah. If you let them go one year, they do what they like every other year. So you're you're uh, you've been fishing now for a few years, have you? Yes. Since it's tall enough to come out. <laughs> and I'm still not very tall. <laughs> yeah. And that big cruise here, you you know, there's two you two of you boys with your father, is that the way most crews uh, operate? Three, three is the biggest crew around. Some people are thinking, no, that's not a very big crew for a... But like a lot of us here and I got three traps for two, mate. Really? Yeah. So they got a bigger job again. The extra man makes a big difference. Yeah. So what are you doing now once the trap fishery is over? Now we go down toward Cape Rays for the trawl fishery. Trawl and flying. It's still you and your father then, is it? Yeah. Ian is back in school. Yeah. Two men and there's nearly an off. Trial. So it's a pretty good life, though. You're 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 proud yes. to be a fisherman. Yes. The fish are keep coming. Joe, the fish are so small, what you got is going right through the mesh. That's right, yeah. So really tom tops. Yeah. Tanner. What else you got there? You got some lump? Lump fish. Dolphin. Catfish. There's another. There's one of your rings to get What's the pack there? Another, another lint shade. Why is that much to it? Oh, you know, yeah. Not much to the trap fishery this morning, so the O'Learys took us out to where the other fishermen were hauling gill nets. They were doing pretty well, too. It certainly seemed that the fish were moving offshore. being run down out there. Well, when you're crawling out there in the fall of the year where we could fish for five miles off the land, and you're right out in the shipping lane there, right? And it's dangerous then, it's the socket. Real dangerous. Some of these big boats won't turn there. Do they pick you up on their radar? Or? Well, if they do, they don't. <laughs> they never give no alarm. They don't blow no arms on it. They just pass inside in, outside in. Sometimes you wonder if you're, you know, did you go that close, you wonder if you should stay on your trial or not. Have you had any close calls yourself out there? No, not really, but sometimes you make you think. <laughs> you see them coming out of the fog like Saudi, you know. And you usually have fog out there, don't you? Ninety percent of the time that there's fog out there in the, in your law, anyhow. A good spot of fish you're on now, friends. Yeah, nice bit there, all right. The favorite time of the time said there was a good spot of fish here somewhere. Where were that high flyer? There's a high flyer there somewhere, said there was a good spot. Look there. <laughs> there's fellas there everywhere, right? <laughs> there's something over there, honey. We clear off again, boys. We find everyone else's boys on your own, honey. How much do you figure you got now, Fred? Right? Both we have 1,600. You know, 1,600. It's going to be another good day for you, then. Yeah, there's another fleet there to have this. Get a couple of thousand, that's not bad.
Nice and handy home, honey. The fog was thick by now. It blanketed everything. We picked our way through it. Not much of a day for the O'Learys. They'd hoped for another burst of fish in the cod traps, but the gamble had failed. Empty nets this morning. Scarcely enough fish for a feed. While the gillnetters, like Franz Coombs, were doing well with the fish. But that's the way the fishery goes, especially the trap fishery. And everyone knows it could be the O'Leary's turn tomorrow. The wharf at Portugal Cove South was a busy place. The young fellows were out cutting tongues. The men with the gill nets were busy cleaning their fish. And the girls were doing their share too. It had been a good day for those who were fishing gill nets, a bad day for those with traps. But the O'Learys weren't complaining. They'd done well early in the season. We promised we'd come back in the fall to film them fishing with flies. Yes, fly fishing for cod off Cape Race, when we come back. Well, here it is, a fly, an artificial lure used for catching codfish. The O'Learys use these hooks on a floating monofilament trawl and swear by it. In fact, they say it outfishes the conventional trawl four to one and eliminates the fuss and cost of using bait. It's amazing, just a piece of red rope decorating a bare hook, and it's revolutionized trawling here on the southern shore. Well, it's not too hard to make. I'm just, just two small pieces of red rope, two strands, shove them through. You turn up three ends and like this, and you just take this end then, and you twist it around like this, then get the lighter and melt the, melt your oil on with the lighter. And it's the same thing as, as it's as well as in, right? And that's the fly. That's your fly. This is what we're using to, on the floating trawls, right? Well, this we had to see for ourselves. So we came back in the fall and found Joe and Pat hauling their floating trawls somewhere off Cape Race. Like well, if you have bait gear and you put it out, when you go out next morning, you leave it out all night. Usually your bait is all gone, no fish. But with this gear, we had them out, we, had, we hauled 20 lines to fall after 12 days and got 1,700 pounds off of 20 lines. So they were out 12 days from the time we seen them until we seen them again. So it keeps fishing. That's right. One fish falls, the fish falls off, but the fly is there just to catch another one. With the bait, if the fish grab the bait, your bait is gone. Now, is this spreading around Newfoundland? I mean, are more and more fishermen getting interested in fly fishing? There's a lot, of, a lot more people fishing it up here now, man, what they were. Last fall, they were the way, I'd say, double the people that were that had fall before. I believe they fish this way in some shots, too, don't they? Yeah, that's where, well, that's where it really started, a fellow young from Passy, right? He was fishing in some shots, and he was, a, he was really the fellow started to fly fishing up there. So you'd recommend it now for, for any fisherman who, who's used to trawl fishing? Oh yes, and you would hurt any fish. They'll get more on, on flies and then they'll be they'll, on uh, uh, they way more. But there was one time we had half a 28 lines, 3,500 pounds of fish after, after one night. You know, if there was any amount of fish there, you really get the fish. That's my opinion, but then, you know, I mean, we can't get it any other way out there. Is it a, a bit of a tangle using this kind of gear? Yes, it's, it is. It's not gear that you can tub back easy, right? I mean, if you 
You can't handle it. The only way you can handle it really is under on it and leave it out. Just set it out there and leave it. Because you go taking it back, it's really hard to coil into the tub, right? Really hard. But it's well worth it though in the long oh, run. Oh, better gear, yeah. All man of film is better gear anyway. Right? As October faded into November, the days shortened and the weather grew foul. You could only get out and boat occasionally then, so one by one the fishermen of Portugal Cove South gave up the fishery. It had been a good year for many. On the 13th of November, Joe and Pat O'Leary took up their trawls too and called it quits for the year. They had 500 pounds that day. If there was any doubt in their minds before about the floating trawls and the fly fishing for cod, it's all gone now. They've saved a lot of money in bait. They've saved a lot of time in baiting. They know the flies won't rot or fall off. And they know they've caught more fish. For a week last fall, they fished five lines of regular trawl next to five lines of floating trawl. The most they got from the ordinary trawl was 150 pounds of fish. The flies took from 500 to 700 pounds. With catches like that, the O'Learys have said goodbye to the bait devils. We returned to Portugal Cove South in mid-March. It was the kind of day when only a water dog would venture out. There's no fishery here at this time of year. We knew the men would be inside at the gear, getting ready for the spring fishery. The firewood wigwams told me they had already been busy in the woods. There was a touch of winter lingering in the air, but a hint of spring too. A promise that it wouldn't be too long before the O'Learys and the other fishermen of Portugal Cove South would take to the water again. Joe and Pat and Ian were hard at work getting their trap ready for another season. And how did then bring it over? When the men are up now, a few holes we, we tore last summer, and we taking it in, putting it out, and mash fish. And we're trying to mend her up now, but I get her ready for getting the bottom in there. And so the O'Learys get ready for another fishing season. There's still a lot of work to do, mending the twine, tying flies for their floating trawls, looking for new ways to improve their lot as fishermen. There's always something new to learn, which reminds me, remember those strange rubbery sand collars? Well, they come from the moon snail or conch. It's actually a gluey blend of eggs and sand, molded and hardened around the shell. That's the end of the mystery. That's the end of our show. Join us next week for the powers of branches.